Hello, everyone. It's a great pleasure to see you again on another episode of the PFC Public Consultation Webinars. Today, we're talking about the Chilean Forest Certification System, a very interesting system within the PFC family. My name is Hubert Inheiser. I'm a technical officer at PFC International, and I'm happy to be your host on today's event. Our agenda is the usual. Uh, we first have a short uh, introductory presentation about PFC International delivered by me. And then I'm very happy to have here Andre La Rosa uh, from the third floor who will guide us through the Chilean Forest Certification System. And then at the end, as you always, we have some time for clarification questions. So here we start. For those who, who doesn't know, the PFC stands for, the acronym stands for, Program for the Endorsement of Forest Certification Systems. We are an alliance of independent national forest certification systems under the umbrella of PFC International. All of these national forest certification systems are based uh, on PFC's sustainability benchmark standards or international standards. This is a purely uh, voluntary mechanism promoting sustainable forest management through independent third-party certification. We are very proud that we are the world's largest forest certification system and provider of three quarters of the world's certified and sustainably managed timber. Here you can see our global coverage and you can see uh, that Chile is a very important member in our alliance in Latin America. There's still some wide spots, so there's place always to improve, but we are happy that we maintain this uh, big number of uh, national governing bodies across the globe. And now a bit more introductory details about the assessment, which is part of the uh, webinar that we have now. The Chilean forest certification system was submitted in uh, November uh, for assessment. This assessment is carried out by the registered PFC assessor, an independent assessor, um, yet to be appointed. Uh, and the part of this assessment, there's a 60 days public consultation period where we encourage all stakeholders to comment or have their say about the Chilean forest certification system. Uh, this public consultation was uh, opened today and it's available, uh, it's open until 9th of February, 2023. Uh, it's very important that all of these comments which are submitted to PFC International in this public consultation will be considered by the assessor in the assessment report. Once again, we strongly encourage uh, all stakeholders uh, to have a look uh, at the complete system documentation, which is available uh, on our website and uh, submit their comments if there's any until 9th of February, 2023. And after this very short introduction, I'm very happy to have Andre here with us and uh, I'm stop sharing the screen and I would like to invite uh, Andre to take the floor and guide us through the Chilean system. Thank you, Andre. You're muted for the moment, Andre. Please uh, unmute yourself. I was saying, thank you very much, Uwe. There we are. Uh, and now we are ready for the presentation. Um, <clears throat> good morning to all of our friends here present. Uh, and, um, and it's a special day always to introduce for revision the standard that we present as a national governing body, a standard that represents the local uh, forest um, consideration as what is sustainable. So I started here then, and I will explain the, our revision process and the final outcome following um, the guidelines provided by EFC International in terms of giving first a forestry context. And uh, so, <clears throat> before going into specific matters of, well, does it now, doesn't, did it change? Yes, thank you. Okay, okay, well, <clears throat> Chile is not a long and narrow country by chance. It's at the west eastern border. It's uh, the Andes range, very steep, 
mountains still active in terms of volcanoes, uh, recently eruptions. And on the western side, if we have the coastal range, uh, a very old mountainous range with rounded hills nowadays, it, that defines the uh, the limit with the ocean. Okay, so in that geography, we have lots of native forest, 14 million hectares that are located in the hills of the Mount of the Andes Range mostly, and some remnants in the uh, the, the the land in in the south to not only mountainous terrain, but that is in the southern part of the country. The north, it's deserted, so there are no forests there, but there are some national parks. We have 18 million hectares of, of national parks within the country of 74 million hectares total. And so it's nearly 20%, we can say, of the of the country it is covered with, with, with national parks. And we also have as forest resource, important planted forest. Right up pine, almost 1.3 million hectares. Eucalyptus, 860,000, right? And some other species, 170,000 hectares. So that's mostly our the forest resource. Okay, how is that distributed? Well, the as I mentioned, the, the native forests are mostly at the foothills of the Andes range. In and in the southern part of the country, also in the coastal range. In the north desert, so very little forest there, except some plantations that have been done over time, uh, mostly for protection of, uh, of watersheds. Okay, the center of the country, uh, where most people live. That is where the planted forests are located. And they are located mostly in the coastal range where they replace the graded land abandoned after being cultivated by wheat for some hundred years. When that didn't go any longer, they had some sheep there. And when the sheep couldn't go any longer, they were replaced by planted forests. So really very important in terms of uh, Ecological restoration of the soil is the, the effect of the planted forests have in the coastal range. They also are in the foothills of the Andes, mostly in grazing land, marginal grazing land that uh, was converted to planted forest mm -hmm. in border with native forest, sometimes intermingled in terms of using um, Within a larger landscape, you, you can see them sharing uh, with uh, native forest and planted forest together. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they are mostly located in a small sector of about 400 kilometers in latitude, and in 80 percent, as it says there, is located in the center of the country in three regions. Okay, what is our roundwood consumption? So that's the resource. I, I located it for you in, in the absolute numbers. And then how is that converted into products? Well, the roundwood consumption, industrial consumption, is about 43 million cubic meters per year. And that has been very stable over time. Here I present uh, for year 2020 and 21. And you can see that there are many minor changes between two years. It's really sustainable nowadays, the production with uh, mature Planted forests that are, have reached maturity as a regulated forest, mostly. So in terms of by industry, about 37% is uh, pulp consumption, uh, the largest product exported by Chile, pulp. Mm -hmm. And uh, but all, but if you look at the numbers too, sawmills and panels and veneers uh, amount to about 50% of the industrial consumption. And chips, it's about 11, I mean, sorry, 12, 13% chips. Mm -hmm. And those chips are mostly eucalyptus. Rayada pine is industrialized in the country, primary industry at least, about 98%. Mm -hmm. uh, eucalyptus, no, a large part of eucalyptus is still exported, although we have, uh, there's a new large pot mill coming 
in the in in place in a few years, and that will probably reduce the exports and have internal production, domestic production. Okay. Now you see that uh, within Chile, native forest amount to about one percent if of the industrial roundwood consumption. So native forests do not really participate in the industry. They are left for protection. They are located mostly in steep terrain. So it's quite good for environmental, excellent for environmental services. The, when, when combined with, plant, with planted forests, native forests, they together provide the best outcome, I think, in terms of environmental services and productive services too. I mean, we have to live and use forest products on our daily life, but both combined make the best. Okay, but important here, because when we talk about our standard, we focus on standard four plantations for planted forests for a good reason. 98%, 99% of the production comes from those forests. So we have to put an eye, very strict eye on how operations are done in those resources. Okay. So here I will give uh, following again PSC guidelines. I will uh, present uh, the Chilean system in general terms. Okay, <clears throat> let me just move a little bit here. Uh, Corporación Set for Chile, it's, its official name, is a non for profit organization <coughs> for private sector created in 2002. Uh, it is uh, part of an a, uh, innovation project funded by Corpo in Chile, and its goal was to create the standard providing um, competitive advantage for our exports. Okay. So it started with in mind that Chile needed to have high and certified operation, a standard of high um, level operations that will make it possible for Chilean exports to not to have any kind of trouble in the in the markets. Okay. So it's an innovation project, 2000, create, started in 2000, and it, started, it was created officially as a corporation in 2002. 2003, the first company was certified. And in 2004, we received PFC's endorsement, and Chile is the first non-European country to receive that endorsement. So we are very proud of that, that we moved very quickly in terms of understanding the importance of forest certification for guaranteeing the good use, the proper use of the forest resources available, and in our case, in particular, planted forest. Okay, in 2005, the, the, having PFC's endorsement, the first uh, uh, change of, of certification, and in 2008, we started expanding into the uh, printing in Printing then, printing uh, sector. Nowadays, printing and packaging sector as, as, as they merge and use the same resource base essentially. Okay. And so, and then in, even in, in 2019, we have there, we managed to have the first uh, certified newspaper in the country. And we believe in Spanish, probably the, the first in Spanish language, and definitely the, the first in South America too. We're very proud of it. But important to mention is that there's a scarcity of use of paper, of that kind of paper in the market. And unfortunately, that um, uh, newspaper is cannot longer be certified because of lack of certified material. Important thing to notice. Okay. We have a staff of five. This staff is, has been working together. I've been part of this staff since 10 years almost now. We've been working together since uh, PFC Chile. Okay, a little bit of story here. The, um, the set for was created as part of a larger institution that specializes in innovation. As I mentioned, this is an innovation project that was given to Fundacion Chile for uh, developing that project with the technical assistance of the Forestry Institute in Chile. Okay. And then after 10 years, we, as a corporation, moved out of Fundacion Chile and became an autonomous corporation in terms of, of uh, administering the corporation by our staff, direct, not as part of a larger institution. 
That occurred in 2013. And this staff, uh, uh, here at the, in the slide, uh, we have been together since then, working and developing the system. As a technical secretary, we have Rodrigo Vidal. As uh, technical matters, Maria Jose Perez and Flavio Reyes. And in communications and marketing, Marcela Gomez. This team allows us to have um, an impact within the forestry sector in Chile in terms of effectively promoting sustainably managed forests, planted forests as a concept, and of course, in providing material for the paper main today, nowadays, mainly for printing and packaging industry, where we have an impact in the use of the logo. And through that logo, we promote uh, the understanding and preference for certified products. Okay, as a, as a system, nowadays we have 1.9 million hectares certified. Of that, 1.3 are for planted forest. Uh, and conservation areas and, and other uses total are 0 0.6, but at least, we must say that at least 400,000 hectares of native forest are being also included within the management unit. And therefore, they are certified too. There's, a, there's a many commitments and requirements in the standard related to the proper conservation of the native forest present in the management unit. So, important there to note is one third, 400,000 native forests, 1.3 planted forests. So, at least my, my calculations, about 25% is uh, conservation area within. The management unit. Okay. In terms of change of custodies, we have 80 certificates, and as of those, 46% are in the. Well, no. 58% are in print numbers. In numbers are in printing and packaging. So that the importance for, for us of that market is very clear, and it has the advantage that the local use creates. Um, our market recognition for the PFC brand. Okay. Now let's move into the standard setting process, and that which began in 2021, and we submitted our uh, request for endorsement in November 2022. Let's see. let's begin by saying that uh, the our sustainable Forest management standard uh, has nine principles. That's how the way it's structured. Then within principles, so there are criteria, indicators, and we also provide verifiers as a guidance for the auditors, which are the advantage of national systems, of course, is that we can provide verifiers that are very specific uh, for what is being audited. So as evidence, that, that's quite an advantage. And of course, we can do that because we are a national system. <clears throat> and, uh, and therefore, now the principles have to do with planning. One, principle two is conservation of forests and areas of high conservation value. Three has to do with the maintenance of the forest resource operations, how the operations should not affect the uh, productivity of the, of the land. Biodiversity, soil, and water. It's a principle that nowadays can be seen as where the ecosystem services are. It's how the standard relates to the ecosystem services. And then we have principle five with local communities, six indigenous people, seven labor relationships, eight laws, treaties, and other um, accords. And principle nine that used to be mon uh, monitoring and evaluation. We have to change this one. It's nowadays is monitoring, evaluation, and control and that's where we included the new great requirements that PSC added in terms of internal auditing. I think that's quite a good and interesting um, new aspect of this, the basic standard requirements from PSC. And it's something that uh, we appreciate very much and, and it will help definitely for uh, sustain, I mean, uh, continuous improvement and internal audit is, is, is a key thing for guaranteeing a better, uh, management of this of the forest. Okay. Well, so nowadays it's monitoring, evaluation, 
algo assessment and phone call. History of the stamp. Well, the first version was um, established and published in 2002. Those days, 20 years ago, the emphasis in Chile had to do with working conditions. We were moving from an average of 10, 15 million cubic meters to 25, 30 in a very short period of time. That had a great impact in terms of operations, more than double the operations that were being carried out in a, in a few years. That had to do with uh, an afforestation program from 1970s and that were maturing in, in the 2000s and making quite a flow of, of wood flow into, into the system. And operations have to be done in, 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 in a highly effective manner. And that created uh, demand for working conditions to be very careful about working conditions of those, of those operators. And that was the social issue of the day, the working conditions and, uh, and the environmental concerns of the day for the non-conversion of uh, native forest. Ever since uh, the Central Standard was established, there has been no more forest conversion in any certified company. So that's more than 20 years now that we don't see forest conversion in Chile, in, at least in the large companies. And, uh, and of course, also because there was a, the, this new level of, of harvest required the use of new machinery and new equipment. The, we had to be very careful in those days of the, the operational impacts that we were having as um, the, the intensity of the harvest increased. In two, that, so those were the environmental and social and productive conditions of 2002 when the first standard was delivered. In 2008, the first revision, uh, we were raising the bar on protecting the forest resources, conservation areas, and monitoring and evaluation. So, <coughs> sorry. So once, uh, by then, 2008, working conditions had improved significantly. The there were no no, no conversion of of uh, native forest. And the, the operational impact were controlled. And of course, then as development goes, you can move into a new stage and raise the bar, as PSC says, right? And uh, we raised the bars in terms of, well, what can we do better now? And that had to do, well, we have to be more careful about the conservation areas and, um, and how we relate those to some local uses and needs. Protecting the forest resources in general and the diseases, forest fires, um, and well, I'll, well, we'll see some of them later on, but mostly about how can we better protect our forest resources. Fire prevention, as I said, would be very important in Chile because of, uh, of the dry summers that we have that prone to having. Uh, forest fire. So most important to protect those stands that take 20, 20 years to mature, at least if we're talking 35, we're talking about pine, 14, something eucalyptus. Okay. So we also um, yeah, moved into to better monitoring and evaluation. And mostly that evaluation had to be a feedback system for improving planning and operation. So we have to monitor, evaluate, and feedback to the system. Well, uh, again, it already existed then, the concept of uh, continuous improvement. In 2016, we did the third, the second revision, that's it. And in that case, in that year, or well, well, that process really took, took quite, a, quite a time. We did a very intensive and thorough analysis of our standard. We realized that we were lagging in certain elements that needed to be updated quickly to reflect the new demands in society, again, as the country develops, we have more requirements. And so the standards have to update themselves in order to meet the new requirements. And in 2016, the new demands, social demands, had to do with um, environmental services. And that's how we came up with, the, with that. We, we did that principle for, to look at it from an environmental services perspective, we uh, had to deal with local communities in, a, in a more uh, concrete ways. 
active, proactive, from reactive to proactive, you have to move, from negative externalities to positive externalities. What? There's some positive externalities that can come out of the forest uh, resource, and they, they exist certainly, but we have to promote them, and development projects for local communities and so on. And so quite a radical change in terms of how the standard uh, addresses the dem social demands of local communities, particularly in the case where in Chile, there was some social aspects that were not properly covered. And there's some issues that had to be solved and they have been improving ever since. This time around, the, the standard, we could, we could see the impact of a better uh, relationship with local communities. However, with indigenous peoples, it's uh, it's it's a different issue. We did quite very much with the with uh, with uh, them in 2016, and we managed to um, have recognition of well, uh, uh, ILO 169 is included in, in the standard, of course, and much more than just that. There's a whole criteria related to the, the those issues, but also in terms of offering state offering uh, uh, technical assistance, uh, participating in reforestation programs if requested, and in trying to improve the some contentious relationships between uh, indigenous peoples and forest companies. And, and, and it had quite an, an impact then, but things have changed in Chile dramatically over the years. And, and nowadays the conditions are like the well are very different there. But nevertheless, what it is in the standard and was reflected in 2016 created the opportunity for a good relationship between the forest companies and indigenous people and the and, and the preservation of the all of their sites of of high value because it would be the well we incorporated all the special sites of the indigenous peoples as if they are highly areas of high conservation values and treated as they are the high ecological the important areas. So we have them and we move into high conservation values too. Important there. Okay. In this third revision process in 2000 that started in, in July 2021, we following the standard setting uh, requirements. PFC standard setting requirements. We did a gap analysis of our current standard and compare it to Australia and Zealand standard that has certainly a forest resource similar to ours in terms of the planted forest. <coughs> we look at the international standard of FSC international standard, PFC international re requirements updated in 2018, and the then recently released SFI standard. So we did a gap analysis between our standard and those four standards of reference. Conclusion was that uh, by incorporating PFC new requirements as stated in 2018's version, we, with our current standard updated with those uh, requirements, we fulfill the, we wouldn't have any gaps compared to the other three standards that we review. So by updating us with new PFC requirements, we fulfilled all in comparison with our competitors or, or well, in the case of FSC competitors in the case of SFI in New Zealand as a reference point. Okay. In November 2021, we launched the revision process where we published a standard our draft version of the standard, including the adjustments with uh, as, as a result of the gap analysis, and that was published and inviting for the formation of a working group, following again the guidelines, how to promote and uh, dis disseminate the invitation to participate in the working group. The working group was chosen, selected by the uh, board of directors of, of CERCOR in March 2022. And uh, as you see them here, it's uh, 10, uh, 10 people 
they represent all the relevant elements required in the, in the standard. I will mention a few of them. The, let me just wait a second here, please. Oh, sorry. Okay, so our president was uh, of the working group, the president of the working group, Jose Antonio Prado. He used to be the highest ranking forestry official at FAO during eight years. So quite a, a, a person that knows and, and writer of a book on forest plantations, uh, a civil culturist by training and, uh, and expertise in, in, in high level studies too. Then we have Rosa Alzamora, she's a university professor in economics, forest economics. Susana Galloso, she is uh, well trained in environmental impacts, she used to work in a forestry company. Nowadays, she is part of a auditor of um, certification body. She's an auditor. Rodrigo Mujica from uh, Instituto Forestal, yeah, forest uh, the Chilean Forest Research Institute. Uh, Jose Nahualpan, he represents uh, indigenous people. Omar Reguillo, he represents uh, local communities. All of them have quite a, um, an experience in, in, in their own areas of interest. We have Mauricio Reyes, he is from Forestal Arauco. Rafael Ruilar, he is from um, University of Concepcion, expert in soil. Tamara Toledo, she is from CNPC and she is an expert in, um, in labor uh, prevention, uh, prevention as we call them in Chile. Okay, and Sandra Vive, she is University of Chile uh, professor too in the biodiversity. So, so we have specialists in each of one of our nine principles. Okay, so we covered the principles with the people, but they were not only focused on their specific speciality, but they all also had quite an experience in forestry in general in Chile, and so they had a global view of forest management. So when we discussed forest management, sustainable forest management as a whole, we had the view of specialists from different areas, but they had a comprehensive view of the of forest management in general. And that's how we think we have quite a good um, standard nowadays as, as the other. Important to notice is that none of these persons participated in the previous uh, 2016 version. So it's totally renewed working group from 2016 to 2022. So they had a quite fresh look at the standard and didn't have any emotional attachment to anything written in the standard. They had an objective view of how to make changes if they wanted. Okay. Then we had um, the public consultation in uh, July to August. As part of that uh, public consultation that we, of course, published on the website and, and disseminated through all our media. And, and, and uh, we also had some uh, press releases and, and many ways of communicating to the public that we were having a public consultation in process. Okay. In particular, to deal with key stakeholders, particularly the disadvantaged key stakeholders, we did uh, public consultations activities specific for certain groups. So we had a meeting with forest workers into with them in July 13. We had support from uh, Sergio Gatica, who is a member of our board, and he is a syndical, syndicalist. In the, in the forestry sector, so he has quite a good um, relationship and understanding with the federation here. This is a, when we went with the Federation of Forest Workers in Constitución. So he invited us to uh, request their inputs and comments regarding principle seven of forestry, of labor relations. Okay. In, uh, we did this in order of of, 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 um, of timing. We did in July 26 through a Zoom platform, a whole review of the sustainable standard with Arauco as a key stakeholder and they participated, 78 registered participants, but they were segmented and they had groups participating for each of the principles that were being presented. So quite an interactive, in uh, overview and discussion of the principles in terms of um, of the of, of the whole 
comprehensive stand, uh, comprehensive man of the stand. The, the support we had of Eduardo Medo, who's a member of the PSC Chile, the representative of Arauco, and Mauricio Reyes, who's a member of the working group. And so with them, we had this uh, public uh, consultation, directed public consultation with Arauco. We had one with uh, uh, local communities. So we had uh, um, meetings with three communities, uh, forestry, heavily forestry invested communities in the, in the uh, Bio Bio region, the Arrede, Osano Senda, and Gumbel, and August 5. And with them, we review principle five on local communities. And again, we didn't go alone. We went and, and invited by and organized by or support by Omar Begoyo, a member of the working group, and he's a very well known person in terms of, uh, of uh, issues of local community with forestry companies. 40 years experience in that. So he and he's very well known in his specialty in the region. And so he was a member of the working group and also gave us access to these local communities for exchanging views on the stamp. We had one plan with Mapuche communities too, with our Jose Noel Pan, member of the of working group, representative of uh, Muset, which is the largest uh, organization related to indigenous peoples in Chile. And uh, that was planned for July 30, close to the finishing of our, of our consultation period. And, uh, but unfortunately it was, it was canceled due to outbreak, but uh, you know, we, we didn't manage to change the date within the, the time frame for the public consultation of work. However, we always, he's, um, he, he's in, uh, nowadays he's part of the board too, PFC board. So we have the Jose Manuel Pan, this uh, in, in incorporated in our decision-making at Setford. And, and we always are open to have, uh, and we have had in the past, uh, many instances of presenting PSC to indigenous people with the help of Musech. Regarding public activities, open activities, we had two panels streamed via YouTube. One of them with, with Diario Sustentable records 264 views. And another one with Soleado Neto, and we mentioned her because she's a very well known news reporter in Chile, television news reporter very well known and she, of course, uh, it makes it a um, very good uh, panel of how she moderated and, and give us a lot of visibility too. With her, we had 259 views in, uh, in our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And with how this was done is that uh, you can see we had um, four of the group members representing the, in, in the first panel over here. Uh, from, uh, biodiversity, soils and water, climate change. So we had one there, and myself, I was in, in representing there. We, unfortunately, the, the person who had to come, uh, you know, nowadays with pandemic and so on, things don't happen all, always as you expect. And some, and so I came in and represented economics in the. In, so we had um environmental service introduction uh, in in that panel. And then in the next panel, we had, um, again, uh, Jose Antonio Prado, as I said, a high official in the FAO, uh, very important for us in the, in the working group. And he managed to organize and lead the group uh, very well. And he has quite an experience there. And, and here we have sorry, soil, soil and water, biodiversity, and economics nowadays. And I, I'm just there because I was presenting, but I, I was not part of that panel. But great views, it's um, in, in it's there in, in uh, presented quite a, a, a view of what is forest, sustainable forest management of planted forests in Chile. Then to move forward, in August, we prepared the final draft after the public consultation. And we had a meeting of the, of the group and the group approved by unanimously the, uh, the, the standard and submitted to the board of directors of set for Chile for its approval. And that was done in November 24. And that is when the, the, the standards have been published since in our website. And then we are uh, submitted, of course, to PFC International. So with the unanimous 
uh, approval of the working group. It was given to the board of directors and they also approved unanimously the publication of the revised standard that is now in our website. Main improvements, I will move fast now. <laughs> Sorry for being too slow, but I, I want to explain uh, a few things that the context of what we're doing. It's a lot of, it's a long job. <laughs> it's a lot of work to, 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 to prepare a standard. Many things go into it. So, uh, so I want to say what we were doing in, in, in this process. Well, changes now, concrete changes to the sustainable forest management standard of 47 criteria. We have two new ones. Both have to do with uh, new PFC international requirements. And we updated eight criteria. When it comes to indicators, we have 231 in the standard. Fifth, 41 were updated and 25 are new. Again, most of those have to do with, uh, most of them have to do with the PFC standard requirements, but some of them also have to do with the working group that came with good ideas and, and improvements of the standards, you know, five years after, six years after it will change, things change and it's better to update, okay? Regarding verifiers, we had we have 653 verifiers in the standard. We updated 54, and we have 92 new verifiers too. Many of them that have to do with being more precise in uh, the evidence that needs to be provided for complying for. With this, with the standard, so there we go. And those new requirements and updates were done mostly in principle one that has to do with planning, and four that has to do with environmental services, and nine that have to do with monitoring, evaluation, and nowadays control. Okay, and I will move here to principle one, the which says that the use of forest resources shall be planned and managed according with the sustainable forest management concept long term within the scope of this standard we make it precise and scale of operation and this is important too to mention because scales of operation have been included in the standard to level the requirements for those of a larger scale so we have a standard nowadays that is common to all but when it comes to the impact of the operations large scale operation I you know, have a, a, a global impact that is beyond specific operations. So they have to understand, they have to better understand the impact of operations in a larger scale in the landscape, not only at the stem level. Those were included in the standards and the reason for having scale of operation has to do with that, to be able to raise the level of the requirements for those large companies without affecting the smaller companies that do not have really the resources, nor do they have the a larger impact on the landscape as a lot as a, as a big company does. Okay, so there's one. Then we had in, in criteria 1.8 in particular the requirement of uh, forest management promoting global carbon cycle through maintaining the enhancement of forest resources and their economic services. Okay. This has to do, of course, with capturing CO2 by afforestation whenever possible, and also reducing uh, greenhouse gas emissions in, in their operations. Okay. That is uh, fulfillment of one of the new requirements of, by, of PFC International. In principle, Five on local communities. Those responsible for the for the for the management unit have to uh, respect traditional use, the custom, rights, resources, and development populations. And we added what is in, in blue is what we have been added this time, is that we need to create a permanent communication that consolidates mutual trust. So as our expert in local communities said, yes, you can have quite good relationship with the, the person who is who is representing the company changes if the things don't uh, do not permanent over time and it just one one time and they are over that doesn't really create the kind of relationship that the company needs with the local communities 
So we have to have a more focus on consolidating mutual trust through a permanent communication. And of course, being in the principle, it was also incorporated in some indicators in the stem. Mm -hmm. The thing is that to establish stronger relationship, we, the forestry sector in Chile has uh, controlled the negative externalities, almost none nowadays. Well, and if they do have, they, they compensate or repair or mitigate. They, if, and it's a time for forestry companies to go to a large scale to lean in the terms of a positive externalities. For positive externalities to exist, you have to have a good relationship with the local communities because that's the only way to have a positive outcome from the forest operation in the territory. Okay, then on principle nine, as I mentioned already, we added control to it. And this has to do with uh, incorporating the requirements of uh, internal audits and continuous improvements. These are specified in uh, criteria 9.2 and 9.3 specifically in the standard. But this, again, this idea of internal audits that uh, we think, and, 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 and I had a good discussion with the forestry companies too in Chile, is really a good idea. They have nowadays, uh, they do internal audits on ISO 14,000, but it's not the same doing it that being audited doing it. <laughs> you know, the audit makes quite a, quite a, quite a, uh, you know, the, the, how they do it, how they do the internal audit, the quality and how they process and how they incorporate it into the evaluation, how they translates into continuous improvement and planning. Well, need some pressure. And, and so that internal audit, they now will be audited by external auditors. You see, that makes quite a quite a positive impact in terms of the quality of what they're doing nowadays. So, and and the feedback system will be improved too. So internal audits have quite uh, uh, many many requirements that have to be fulfilled, and and being audited makes it that they will have to be more aware. The companies and they they agree with it, um, they, and they want it to do it that way because. They have a positive attitude towards sustainable forest management. So in Chile, I would say is the, the everyone wants to do better operations. There's nobody you know trying to do things wrong. We all want to improve. And and so if there are way of doing things and, and those are discussed and presented properly, then we move forward. Okay. Well, 9.2, as I mentioned, this is the uh, indicator 929 about the internal audit. This is mostly coming directly from PFC requirements, but it uh, has that's how it's been incorporated in place about the internal audit and the requirements for it. And the nine, criteria 9.3, uh, and remember that criteria have indicators within it, so this is a whole new criteria with several indicators in it about how to do the, the periodic review and how that translates into uh, continuous improvement the feedback system, and the promotion of improvement as a key for sustainability. I would say that sustainability is the is sustainable development, really. It's always developing. Once you, reach one, once you reach one level, you have to think the next level. It's continuously improving. We have to, development is a continuous process, never ending. You never, you never get to the point where you are satisfied. So the best way is to have precisely a mechanism, a feedback mechanism that will allow us to uh, put in, 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 in written and in planning and in monitoring how we are improving and how we are developing. So sustainability requires development. Without development, things stagnate and turn out to be not sustainable at all in the long term. Okay, and that was my presentation. I hope I didn't take much of your time and I'm, I'm open for questions now. Thank you. I will stop sharing. I can see you. Excellent. Thank you so much, um, Andre. I, I can very much relate to you know, the continuous improvement, but I think that you can be at least a little bit happy about the development of the Chilean system so far, taking this on these various levels. So I think that it was really well represented in the presentation as such. Uh, and uh, now, as, as you mentioned, we have uh, time for some clarification questions. 
uh, if there is any, um, please raise the hands if there's a question. Uh, in case uh, the others are still thinking about it, I, I just would have one question, which um, I think it was very, very interesting when you mentioned, you know, this, um, what you experienced, these improve, uh, increased cases of forest fires, some climate change uh, effects and so on on plantations. And there's one that I wanted to ask that, um, is there any uh, trend you see that, uh, which is changing now from Pinus radiata into some other species, which are potentially maybe a bit more resilient to forest fires, or is there any development in this sense of, uh, in your opinion? Well, it, it turns out that the most resilient species of all is Rayata pine. Rayata pine, for those who don't know, is a, it's a species, it's a wonderful species. I mean, it grows, has a huge range of growth, it's adaptable, it, it grows well with little water, with a lot of water. Does it resist frost? That's its limitation. But in ecological terms, um, and Rayata pine comes from Monterrey in, in, um, in California. And, and it has been from California, moved to many countries, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, you, uh, Spain, and, and where you go. It's really a resilient, adaptable species. So really what has happened is eucalyptus is a problem in Chile, not, uh, not Rayata pine. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we were moving too much towards eucalyptus, and nowadays the, the the trend is going backwards a little bit, a little bit. You know, of course, these things take a whole rotation. <laughs> so for a change to happen, it's uh, 20 years for for you to notice. <laughs> you know, it's like steering a ship. It goes little by little, but in the long term, it makes a difference. But in general, what the companies are doing is that they are very concerned with uh, with water for the communities. That that's a uh, it's a potential conflict there. And uh, the too many plantations and landscapes. Some people think that they affect the uh, water supply for local communities. Uh, it's questionable. It's being challenged, and there's for and pro and cons because, as we all know, forests regulate uh, the the hydric. So, if if in it's uh, known for centuries now, if not millennials, that you keep the forest. To prevent landslide, landslides, you keep forests to have clean water, and you keep forests to have, in our case, water in summer. Okay, some say that because it's an exotic species, it changes. I don't know. Trees, <laughs> trees <laughs> consume water all. I'm not much different. But anyways, but companies are expected, and it's in the standard to understand the relationship. And we're talking about the the or the impacts of larger companies in the landscape. Precisely, they were included in the standards on requirements that have to do with studying the impact on water regulation mm -hmm. and, uh, and availability. Now, of course, that's uh, more important in some areas of the country. In some areas, there's enough water and it hasn't been an issue till now. Uh, climate change is, of course, an issue. And yes, it affects forest fire. And it's a high concern in in and they have to have preventive measures. And again, we in this standard, well, we had already included in the past standard what we call um, preventive silviculture, which is the, the interface, urban rural interface, and how to keep um, uh, fires from occurring due to human causes that could affect the, the local communities. But yes, climate change is a, is a big issue. But again, we think that forestry in general, worldwide, it contributes to climate change mitigation and um, so capturing. So we promote afforestation whenever possible, as as required by the PSC standards. Too. And um, and the species, well, it's it, the industry is also demanding. You 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 plant what the industry requires. So our, our focus, just to mention, is that. 98% of the industry is based on red pine and eucalyptus. Then the challenge is to guarantee that that industrial consumption comes from sustainable origin. And that is the managed the best way possible. So that there's a continuous supply of those products that as a society we consume on our daily lives. You know, as we always say here, and you, you just have to look around yourself. And you look at, I look at you in the back of you, you have plenty of paper there huh? in, your, in your library. And where does that come from? Well, it comes from our plantations, really. Well, not ours specifically, but it comes from mostly nowadays from planted forests that are well managed. So. Well, thank you very much, Andre. I think it's, okay. this is really 
this is really interesting uh, and uh, i think that uh, your comparison when you steer a ship that the time it changed to to go i think this is really valid in forestry and i think this is something what we need to communicate more uh, because for example when i had a chance to look at the forest what my grandfather planted 60 years ago when he shared the thoughts with me that what he had in mind and how we look at it now after 60 years just this one example you know it's it's extraordinary how this overarching impact of forestry is visible all around us and it's clearly more uh, vivid in implantation like uh, environments because it's more rapid the whole process but i think this we could continue for for hours and i would like to be just mindful about the uh, the availability of all the participants again thank you so much i don't see any need for clarification questions potentially because most of the people here were involved in one way or the other in the discussions earlier. So once again, thank you, uh, Andre, for the very well prepared uh, presentation and for all the others who joined us uh, for this webinar. Thank you so much and have a lovely rest of the day. Thank you, Hubert, for inviting me and have a good day too. Hello to everyone. <laughs> All the best. Bye. Bye.